Welcome back to A Gross of Physics. Today is day two, and today we're going to cover standards. What is a standard? Well, in science, it's important to have something that everyone can agree upon in order to further knowledge. So a standard is defined as something which other objects or quantities can be compared to, and it's agreed upon unit. We use typically the metric system in, the, in physics, um, but there are standards in all different facets of life. Monetarily, we have things like the gold standard or the silver standard, and that was based on um, a monetary unit so that everyone knew that if we used gold as our standard, the amount of gold a country had could be used to figure out the value of their monetary units. Before that, um, there were different types of standards. Um, you know, in terms of trading, in terms of people being able to barter one another, there were standards of services and goods, and that's an older type of standard as well. In terms of length, we use standards in physics or in our everyday life of, the, of length. Um, the meter or the mile. Everyone who runs a 5K race needs to know what 5 kilometers is or the number of miles involved, which is 3.2 miles. So there's a standard so that every 5K is the same length. When people are running races, when people use um, you know, Olympic timing, it's important to realize that if someone you know, runs a certain mile distance and has a record time, that it's the same mile that everyone runs throughout the world. Now there are issues that are also involved, such as the wind speed during the race and the elevation. But our standard of length is an important one in physics and in the world around us. If we're going to use miles as our standard and we have standards for speed limits, it's important to know what an actual mile is so that every car is um, moving at the proper speed. If one car is set to a different value than another car in terms of its mileage, then we're going to have someone's speed limit or someone's speedometer list a different value than someone else. Uh, in order to police that, it's important that everyone uses the same value. In our country, in America, we use miles per hour. Going north across the border into Canada, they'll use kilometers per hour. And many cars have both the miles per hour and kilometers per hour listed right on the dashboard uh, for their speed limit. So that's important to realize that 70 kilometers per hour is different than 70 miles per hour. Um, and if you try to drive 70 miles per hour in Canada, you're going to find that uh, you might get pulled over and be issued a ticket. As far as other areas of standards, we have standards in terms of the movie industry. People watch movies based on their rating. Um, kids watch typically G-rated movies parental guidance for PG, there's PG-13, there's even NC-17 and R-rated movies, and different age brackets are appropriate during different movies. Now, of course, there's different parental involvement with that, and some parents uh, find that their children are more mature and can watch an R-rated movie before the age of 17. But an NC-17 movie would only be accessible to uh, people who are 17 or older. We have standards in terms of the voting age, standards in terms of the drinking age, standards in terms of the age people can drive cars. So all these standards are based on um, accepted values that we as a society or we as a global society have decided are appropriate. We used to have older standards and a list of older standards such as the palm and the cubit and the span and the fathom the pace or the foot are all ones that were used before the metric system was invented. Now each one of these is based on a body part. So the palm is the width of your hand in terms of the width of your palm. So if you wanted to measure out the number of palms a certain uh, desk or chair was, you would lay out your hand and move your hand along the desk and measure how many palms uh, that would be. The cubit is the distance between your elbow and the tip of your fingers. This is actually listed in the Bible. Um, in the story of Noah's Ark, Noah is, con is instructed to build his ark uh, a number of cubits long. 
I believe it's 400 cubits in length. And that was to house all the animals of the, of the world. So in biblical times, they used uh, standards as well. The span is if you take your hand and you uh, separate it in this manner, um, and you go the distance between your thumb and your pinky. So you can use your, your hand to measure the span. Um, it is not arm span. That's a, that's a different va a value. The fathom is actually the, your arm span. If you separate your arms the same distance apart and you measure from your fingertip to your fingertip, that is the old fathom. Many of us who um, are near the sea or have been on boats or nautical um, vessels know that the fathom is also a measure of depth in the sea. And at this point, it is used as a specific value. But in the olden times, uh, the fathom was just your arm span. And for many people, it is uh, equivalent to your height as well. So if you measure your arm span or your fathom from your fingertips to your fingertips as your arms are outstretched in a T fashion, um, that should be just about the same value as your height. Not to be concerned if the value is not exact. There is discrepancies between some people. Some people's arms are a little longer than their arm span or their arms are a little shorter than their arm span, uh, than their height. Um, perfectly fine. Um, just remember that many of my students are still growing and it may be that they're going to grow into that arm span or their arms will grow a little longer to match their height as they get older. Um, I know that uh, normally puppies uh, have large feet and or paws and that's so that uh, you can kind of tell how big a dog's going to grow based on the size of their their paws when they're when they're puppies. Um, that's, that would be an old uh, method of standards as well. As far as the pace or the foot, um, if someone's playing a game of pickup uh, wiffle ball or softball, they may pace out a certain distance where they walk 10 or 13 paces, and then that's the distance between the uh, batter and the pitcher. Um, if we're playing professional sports, it's going to be important to measure that distance out. If it's professional softball or professional baseball, you're going to want to have a more exact measure for that. But if, if it's just a friendly pickup game, it would be important to just use it as a uh, general estimation. Finally, the foot. Um, if you walk out a number of feet, you go heel to toe, heel to toe, you can measure out the foot. And in fact, the original foot is based on King Edward I, who they measured the foot as the distance from his forearm. Um, it's actually a value that is based on uh, his body, which may or may not be standard to anyone else. Um, so someone with big feet would have a different foot than someone with smaller feet. So it's important to realize that uh, the king was trying to come up with a standardized value so that everyone used um, that value for his foot. Uh, and then they built things according to that number. So the king's physical structure, his actual arm, was used for the basis of the foot. The foot happened to be then standardized more precisely over the years. But at the time, it was uh, merely his arm. Now, each of these standards has a uh, positive and negative value to them. In fact, the standards for um, the old standards do have some positives. Every person can measure um, the values with just their body parts for the most part. Nowadays, we used hands to measure the height of horses. And although originally, that value could change depending upon who was making the measurements. It has become a standardized value for the height of a horse. The other thing is it's good for it would be quick measurements. Um, if it's not important that we get you know uh, an exact value for our pickup uh, softball game, then that's going to be important just to pace it out. We don't have to bring out a tape measure and um, measure the value exactly. Uh, what we can do instead is pace it out, put a piece of string or a piece of wood to denote the, the distance, and each team would use that as their basis so that it's fair for each team, but it doesn't have to be exact. 
It's also good for estimation. If you're trying to figure out approximately how big something is, you can use the span or the palm or the cubit. If you know how big your arm is or how wide your, you know, your hand is or how big the span is of your uh, hand between your thumb and your, your pinky. The problem is that, like I said, everyone has a different value. So for physics, which is an exact science, it's important that we have numbers that get us uh, very precise values. If we're trying to land a uh, rover on Mars, it's going to be important that we're a little precise than having hands or the palm or the cubit as our value for estimation. Um, if we're off by a fraction of a degree in terms of sending this spacecraft to Mars, over uh, the distance from here to Mars, that small discrepancy is going to cause the, uh, the, the spacecraft to miss completely. Uh, plus, if we have different people making measurements or building um, the spacecraft to their specifications, we're going to find that when we put all the pieces together, the spacecraft isn't going to fit. So it's important to have a set of standard values for everyone to use. Physics utilizes these exact standards so that everyone can repeat and um, determine whether or not the results are accurate. Now, standards are important for that very reason. We want to make sure that results can be duplicated. In engineering, if you want to build tables to a certain specification, we want to make sure that everyone has access to that value. If you're trying to fit a couch inside a doorway and your house is built to a smaller specification because you use the palm and your palm happens to be smaller um, than the couch manufacturer, you're not going to be able to fit the couch into your house. So it's important to realize that standards are important not just in physics but in everyday life. We have standards for safety issues, for OSHA guidelines, which allows people to um, have working conditions that are standardized. Um, one of the important things in a, in a public building is to have handicap accessibility. So doorways have to be built so that wheelchairs can, can fit in. Um, that ramps are a certain length so that it's not more difficult for someone to um, get to the first floor of a building. It's also important that we have safety for um, elevators to help people who have difficulty climbing up stairs to get up the set of stairway. Now, uh, even the building of stairs themselves are standardized so that there's not one step that's too big for most people to, to climb. If a person has long legs and they build a staircase to their specifications and someone comes along with shorter legs, they're going to have difficulty climbing the set of stairs. So it's important in our everyday lives and in science to have standards. The Industrial Revolution was uh, built upon the fact that we had standardized sizing. It would allowed us to build things quicker and more efficiently, and that effectively lowered the cost of production. So standards are something that we use in science, that we use in society to help us in our everyday lives. It's important in science, it's important in engineering, and it's important for us as a society. That concludes today's lesson of standards. Thank you.